Welcome back, I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're going to take a look at the Legato Diver by MW Timepieces, a watch that has really become the focal point of two different passions from the brand's founder, Adrian, as it combines a love of watches and horology and a passion for music and guitars. For the most part, the Legato is a traditional diver, but it is one with a twist, as various elements in the design have been directly inspired by those on guitars most prominent of which is this fretboard-inspired bezel. And I believe that makes the Legato the only musically-inspired timepiece I've seen so far. Now, before we jump into this one, I have three quick notes. The first of which is that this watch is not currently available, but rather it will be launching in a Kickstarter in the coming months. Second, the watch we're looking at today is a prototype, so all of your standard prototype warnings apply. And MW Timepieces also mentioned that if they were fully funded, they would graciously send me a final production model to keep when it's all said and done. And that's why the promotional tag was up at the very beginning. And lastly, there's one big thing that I need to admit, and that's that I know absolutely nothing about guitars. And as such, there may be some subtle connections between the design and certain guitars that I'm just not getting here. So bear that in mind, and if I miss something, feel free to mention it in a comment. However, one of my best friends is a guitarist. He never really made it into the big time, but he did perform a bit when he was younger, and it's still very much a passion for him. Now, he's not really into watches in any way, but when MW approached me about doing a review, I shared some of the images with him just to get his take. And just from those promotional images, he thought it was the coolest watch I'd ever shown him and he was already willing to jump on the Kickstarter. So I figured MW was onto something and decided to do the review. Now, that said, let's get onto it. Now, in terms of size, the Legato Diver is 39 and millimeters wide with a lug to lug of 46 millimeters, which means the Legato joins the small but often elite list of microbrand divers that are under 40 millimeters, which most of the time is perfect for those with medium to slender sized wrists. It also has a total thickness just over 12 millimeters, and that does include the exhibition case back all the way to the flat sapphire with 10 layers of AR coating. And in terms of thickness, that's actually pretty decent these days, and especially for a diver with 300 meters of water resistance, which is something you could also say about a total weight of 160 grams on its bracelet, give or take how many links you take off of it. So the Legato has a good solid feel, but it's not overly heavy in any way. Then topping everything off, you have a Sleeta SW200 movement and a 20 millimeter lug width. So if you happen to not like the bracelet, there are plenty of options for aftermarket straps to put on this thing. Although, to be honest, I'm not sure you want to, as this one is pretty comfortable as it is. In fact, with my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this one is practically perfect for me. Now for you, it may wear a little bit different, but I gotta say that this is one of the most comfortable divers I've ever worn. Every once in a while, you'll run across a watch that just feels right when you put it on, like it was just made for your wrist. And for me, this is one of those. Even though it has male end links, which extend out the effective lug to lug, those end links have a rather aggressive angle to them. And on my wrist, they just seem to come down to the natural curvature point. Now, combine that with a fully articulating bracelet that tapers down from 20 to 16, and it simply becomes a joy to wear. There is a slight weight you feel as you wear it, but overall I thought it was perfectly balanced on its bracelet. Deep down, the heart of the Legato is that of a classic diver, one that forgoes any crown guards to give it a rather slick and streamlined case. And in a lot of ways, its case is very reminiscent of that of a Black Bay 58s and that's not a bad thing at all. The overall finishing here is great, with nice crisp clean lines that help define the overall case shape, and act as a border between the polished and brushed sections. It has a mostly brushed finish, and that does include the sidewalls, helping the Legato to maintain its tool watch credibility, and aiding in keeping fingerprints at bay. The only exception to that brushed finish is the polished beveled edges that run along each of the sidewalls, now, even though the Legato comes with a quick release bracelet, they also added drilled lugs to aid in any other strap changes. Turning the watch over, we get a glimpse of the case back, and this is something I absolutely love, as the exhibition case back is made to resemble the sound hole in a guitar. 
and that's complete with the rosette style engraving, as well as these fake strings etched into the crystal. It's very creative, very eye-catching, and just simply perfect for what they were trying to do with the design. Although, one thing to note here is that the case back is secured on with four small screws, instead of your typical full screw down case back. Yet, even with that, they still list it as having a water resistant rating of 300 meters. Now, back to the front and at the right, we have a signed screw down crown. It may be a little bit flat, but overall it's a good size. And there is a nice diamond shaped knurling, making it always easy to get a grip. The crown is also loomed with the MW logo, just for some nice added flair. The bezel itself is also great. It has a nice coin edge to it for added grip, and that does make it easy to get a hold of and use, as well as it has a pretty good action as you turn it. The sound it makes is a little bit hollow, but the tactile response is still good. However, with the bezel, we have the true star of the show, and that's its sapphire covered insert with its guitar inspired design. This thing is very cool and very unique, at least in the world of watches. And to be blunt here, this is the thing that really makes the watch. This is the one design element that really separates it out from the rest of the microbrand divers out there. There are some other cool elements to the watch, but those are really just opening acts of this bezel. What they did here looks fantastic, and it really blends perfectly in with the rest of the design. The zeros, or whatever these things are on the bezel, also help to create an effective crosshair effect, just lining the watch up and helping your eyes to really focus on the hands. Like I said, this is the thing that really makes this watch, and I'd say it's as cool in person as it is in the video. And that's even before we get to how this thing looks loomed up. However, for some, and especially those who aren't into guitars, they may not like this. They just may not get it. And for them, this may not be enough to really distinguish this watch from pretty much any other good dive watch out there, and especially from those that they already own. There's also a functionality cost to this as well, or at the very least, a learning curve to using this compared to other timing bezels out there. Since there's no big arrow at the 12 really drawing your eyes to it, or Arabics on the bezel to indicate how much time is left, it takes a little bit of time thinking about it in order to use it properly. Now, sitting over the dial, we have a flat sapphire with a reported 10 layers of AR coating. But even with that, I found the dial still a bit reflective at times, some of which may be due to the darker nature of this particular dial. Now, as far as I know, there are going to be four different colorways to the Legato. There's going to be a white version, a black, a teal, and this blue version. With this one in particular having a very dark, deep royal blue, combined with a reflective sunburst effect. Once again, I think the Legato started off with something familiar for the dial design, as there are some very familiar elements, such as the painted on half train track chapter ring, or the upside down triangle at the 12, which is then combined with dots for indices. But even if they did start with something familiar, MW then tweaked all of that with their guitar theming, winding up giving the Legato an overall unique look that I would say stands on its own. I especially love the indices here, which are a bit more ring-shaped than dots as they do have a metallic center, giving the watch another small metallic reflective surface that really lets them play with the light, which not only draws your eyes right to them, but also lets them stand out amongst the sea of dark blue that surrounds them. The dial itself and its flotilla of rings doesn't really create any sort of crosshair effect, but since it already has one created by the bezel, it's not really needed. And the dial does have a very nice center line of symmetry, created by the upside down triangle, the logo, the text, and the date wheel, and that does help keep things all nice and orientated. And MW Designs gets extra bonus points for using a color matched date wheel down at the 6, helping to keep everything in the design working in harmony. The text above the date wheel is also rather small, and pretty unobtrusive, but the text below it is even more so. Now, zooming in here, you can see that it states the watch was designed in Indonesia. But zooming back out, under normal viewing conditions, it's more like a white blur. So it's kind of there for those that want to know, but otherwise it never really distracts from anything. In terms of changes for the production line, there are a couple of things I already know about. The first of which is a logo at the top, and I actually really like this as it is. Logos are always a bit subjective, but this looks like it could be a logo for a band, and therefore it really works here. 
But the brand mentioned that they're going to be thinning out the logo as well as making it loomed. The second thing is with the hands. For the production model, the hour hand will be a little thicker as well as a little bit longer. Personally, I've always loved syringe hands. And I think here they work perfectly with the chapter ring and the fret looking bezel. But as it is right here, I'd say that hour hand is a little bit short. So it's nice to know that they're already working on that. And speaking of the hands, I also think the red tip is a great choice on the second hand, as not only does it add a nice bit of needed color, but picking red also works for all of the different colorways. The Legato Diver is one that really grows on you every time you look at it. And I kind of got the sense that they spent a lot of time and thought trying to refine the design. There are a few classic diver elements left in, and I think those do give you a sense of familiarity. But I think enough has been changed here to create something very new and intriguing. The only thing that really feels a bit off to me is that if you take a step back and look at the design as a whole, it does feel a little bit crowded right at the edges. With the complicated bezel sitting next to the chapter ring and indices, it creates a very visually dense area that then opens up to a vast blue ocean before hitting the hands. And that does seem a little off balance to me. In some ways, it also does match the design of the indices. So maybe they did it on purpose. But let's move on to the loom. And this is one other area that they mentioned they will be improving. But as it is right now, I think there's a lot to love here. Everything uses the same blue BGW9 loom. And it looks fantastic. The fretboard bezel sitting next to the ring indices is nothing short of cool. Not to mention the loom date at the bottom, which is just icing on the cake. So it's nice and bright and simply cool looking at first. And as for longevity, it's still pretty good. As in my longevity tests, it mostly stayed on par with that of a Seiko Turtle. So as it is right now, I'd say it's pretty good loom, but there's potential here for it to be even better. Movement wise, MW Timepieces has decided to use a Swiss made Salita SW200. It's an ETA 2824 based clone, and these days it is pretty standard in mirrored tier micro brands. And it's pretty much the perfect movement for this watch, as well as the price range they're shooting for. As for the bracelet, the bracelet is simply great. It's a fully articulating three link style bracelet, which is mostly brushed, just enhancing that tool watch aesthetic. It's very nicely made with solid links, as well as a nice milled push button clasp. And that clasp is complete with six different micro adjusts as well as solid end links with quick release, just in case you want to try some new shoes on it. As a whole, the bracelet perfectly matches the watch, but I do have one kind of minor concern with it. And that's its extreme taper going quickly from 20 millimeters down to 16, which makes everything look just a little bit smaller. And I hate to say it, but also maybe a little bit more feminine. And once again, I hate to say it, but I'm just trying to be honest here. That does turn me off a little bit. But at the same time, that design translates into a combination that is extremely comfortable on the wrist. I already talked about this before at the beginning, but this one is one you look forward to putting on. They also included an alternative leather strap with the watch. It is really nice leather and it does seem like a good strap, but the leather keepers on it are really tight to the point that it's fairly hard just to push that strap into the keepers. In the long run, they may stretch out, but I didn't wind up wearing this at all just for fear of damaging it. Normally, I don't talk about packaging at all. Rather, I just kind of focus on the watch. But here, I do want to talk about it because they did provide a really cool box. One that actually looks like it's made for a mini guitar. It's really well made and just has a slot for everything. So once again, just a perfect choice to go along with this watch. And the only thing that I thought was missing, and this is something I suggested to the brand, is a very small space for the extra links you take off the bracelet. Lastly, let's talk value. Now, things may change, but as far as I know right now, early bird pricing will start at $489. And considering everything you're getting, I think that's overall pretty great. Usually at that price, I'd expect a less expensive movement like a Miyota 9015. But remember, that's $4.89 in Kickstarter pricing, and just like all Kickstarters, the price only goes up from there. And I'm not sure how many of those early bird slots they're going to be. Plus, remember, since this is a Kickstarter, you will have to wait a bit, as well as there is always some additional risk. Long term, I believe the full MSRP is going to be around $659, dollars 
which overall I think is still reasonable, but nowhere near the deal the Kickstarter is. When looking back at the specs as well as the case design, to me it seems very apparent that this is a watch that was designed by a watch collector or enthusiast. As almost every aspect of its core seems to be based around what a lot of watch enthusiasts consider to be the ideal diver right now. It's almost as if they were following and marking off a checklist in the design process, which there's nothing wrong with. Designing a watch that should appeal to a majority of people out there is really a smart business decision. The only problem, or rather complication, is that they're not the only ones doing this. And in a very crowded marketplace filled with a ton of microbrand divers, you need something more than good specs in order to stand out. Luckily though, the Legato Diver does this. By mixing in the musically inspired components, they have created a timepiece that is not only well made, gorgeous to look at, and comfortable, but also one that is very appealing in its uniqueness. The only trick, however, is that it's appealing to a very specific group of people, guitarists. For everyone else, it's still a very well made, comfortable, cool looking diver. But there may not be enough here to help differentiate it from every other good microbrand diver out there. That loomed up fretboard bezel looks cool, but if it really doesn't mean anything to you, you're probably not going to care, or not going to care enough. However, for musicians and guitarists, and not even necessarily watch collecting guitarists, but guitarists in general, ones who might be looking for a cool, well-made watch, then for them, I think the Legato Diver is a perfect choice. It's well-made, gorgeous, and just a perfect way of showing off your passion. Well, that's my thoughts on the Legato Diver by MW Timepieces. As always, let me know yours down below, and especially if you are a musician, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, see you next time.